this lesson is catered for an audience of students, but we are very fortunate to have a lot of educators participating in today's session. So if you are, are an educator, just know that we are going to be talking as if we're talking to students because we do actually have a young, you know, some younger students in here as well. So if you are an educator in here or you're preparing to be an educator, this is going to be a model lesson for you on what this would look like with students. So as I'm talking and as Mr. Hour is talking. If you feel like, wow, they're talking to us like we're students, we are. <laughs> this is catered to students, and uh, it's going to be a model lesson for you to be able to use with your students, or we also have students here. So that's the setup of this. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I have started the recording for this session, and I'd like to remind you that this will be shared publicly, which means that it's going to be on our YouTube channel. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because we want you to be able to access it on demand. So you can go back at any time and watch it, or you can share it with colleagues, you share it with friends, you can share it with other students so that they will have access to it as well. I will be sending the link to everyone who is registered once we get it published on our YouTube channel so that you'll have access to that. So just a quick setup. We have a lot of people in here and we're so excited to have you all in here. So we would like to ask that you keep your mic muted. Um, there are times that we've asked like, you can come off your mic and you can ask those questions, but just to make it a, a seamless experience for us, so we would just ask that you keep your mic muted most of the time, but we do want you to use that chat over there to ask questions, to share aha moments, to interact with us. So at any time, please post over there in the chat, or if you're having questions or if you're having issues, please share those over in the chat and Mr. Maurer and I will be monitoring that. So quick introductions. My name is Mrs. Dooley. I am a 20 year plus educator in the great state of Texas, and I absolutely love using Minecraft Education Edition in all grade levels and all curriculum areas. Also here with us today is Mr. Maurer. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to all of you <laughs> wonderful people here today. Uh, Mr. Maurer and I live in Iowa, and I support school districts in STEM and computer science, and I can't be more excited to be a uh, part of this live lesson today. Perfect, so we would like to introduce you to the Nobel Peace Prize, which is known throughout the world as the prize that recognizes those humans who make the biggest difference. They're the people who are awarded the prize. The people who are awarded the prize are incredible people who have achieved their goals without any superpowers. Instead, they use their human capabilities like communication, diligence, empathy, and collaboration to dramatically change the world. The Nobel Peace Prize has the power to change people's thoughts and actions to make the world a more peaceful and better place for everyone. In this lesson, we're going to have the opportunity to actually walk in the shoes of a Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Our objectives for this lesson are knowing the purpose and value of the Nobel Peace Prize while discovering a skill used by one Nobel laureate to achieve their cause democratically and peacefully. And then we want to encourage you to set out your vision, no matter how big or small, for peaceful progress in your community by building a visualization in Minecraft. So you're going to have a chance to actually build your ideas and thoughts and vision. A Nobel laureate is a person who is honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for outstanding creative or intellectual achievement. So before we get started, I'm just curious, and how many laureates you can name. So you can either hold up your fingers or you can put it over there in the chat, but how many laureates can you name? And it's okay if you can't name any, or if you can name hundreds. Just be thinking about that.
or if you don't want to share, that's fine too on how many laureates that you, but you can just be thinking about how many that you might know about. So in just a moment, Mr. Maurer is going to jump into Minecraft Education Edition with you, and he's going to introduce you to one special laureate. But before we do that, we want to set up our learning. And so the piece of paper that you have in front of you, we would like for you to sketch this table out on that piece of paper. That way you can write down interesting facts along the way on your journey throughout this active citizen world. So at the top of your table, you're going to start out with who, what skills, and or tools did they use to make a difference? And then that last column is going to say, what did you think was most interesting about that laureate? So that you can be jotting down those interesting facts along the way. You'll notice I put the name of the laureate, the special laureate that we are going to be looking at. So you can add Malala over there in the who column. But then you might also notice that I put another row in there for your name. And so I'm going to have you add your name in your table because we want you to start thinking about what skills and superpowers and interests do you have? What are some of your strengths on what, and how you might be able to apply that to make a more peaceful world? So I'll give you just a moment to jot down the table on your piece of paper just so you'll be able to keep track of what we learn about Malala and then what you learn about yourself and be able to identify those strengths and superpowers. And I threw that in the chat too, in case you missed it or need to go back to it. Okay, so we have who, skills and tools that they use to make a difference, things that you thought were most interesting, and then I kind of gave it away, the hint that we're going to be looking at Malala, but then also there's a row for you to be able to just start brainstorming and thinking about your school, your skills and superpowers. So again, I put that over in the chat. If you didn't have a chance to jot that all down just yet, it's over there in the chat. But I'm going to go ahead because I'm excited to introduce the laureate that we will be following today. Malala Yousafzai is from Swat Valley, Pakistan and is an advocate for education and children's rights. She's also the youngest Nobel laureate in history. She received the Nobel Peace Prize when she was only 17 years old. So we are going to watch just about a two minute video to learn more about Malala before we jump into Minecraft and we're actually gonna get to then walk in her shoes and experience her story. In 2014, a young woman from Pakistan was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, proving that it is never too early to fight for peace. I'm very proud to be the first Pashtun, the first Pakistani, and the youngest person to receive this award. Along with that, I'm pretty certain that I'm also the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize who still fights with her younger brothers. Malala Yousafzai grew up in the Swat Valley in Pakistan. She was only 10 years old when the Taliban took control and started imposing new rules. Malala knew that she had the right not only to get an education, but also to express her opinion. In collaboration with the BBC, Malala started blogging. Under a false name, she wrote a diary about her life, fears, and dreams. But she also criticized the Taliban regime. Malala's blog got a lot of attention in Pakistan, and many wondered who wrote it. Eventually, her family decided to reveal the secret. The Taliban, however, did not appreciate all of this attention. Despite receiving threats, Malala kept going. After the Pakistani authorities managed to drive the Taliban out, life went back to normal. But in October 2012, disaster struck. 
On her way home from school, the school bus suddenly stopped. Two men came aboard, and one of them asked, Who is Malala? Everything happened very fast. Critically injured, Malala was rushed to the hospital. From there, she was flown to England to receive further medical treatment for several months. Miraculously, Malala survived the attack and recovered. The Taliban's intention was to silence Malala once and for all, but instead she became famous. Using that attention and support, she raised awareness on the issue of education, not only in Pakistan, but globally. Her activism landed her several awards, and it all peaked when she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 with Kailash Satyarthi. At the age of 17, she became the youngest Nobel laureate. She managed to make education an international priority and prove that freedom of expression is a compelling instrument to change the world. She has also shown us that, regardless of age, anyone can make a difference. Your voice can also be a force for positive change. What are you going to use it for? My great hope is that this will be the last time, this will be the last time we must fight for education. Let's solve this once and for all. We have already taken many steps. Now it is time to take a leap. So in just a moment, we are going to jump into Minecraft Education Edition, and we are going to have the opportunity to visit two places virtually within Minecraft. We are going to start out at the Nobel Peace Center, which is in Oslo, Norway, and then we're going to travel actually to Malala's hometown in Swat Valley in Ningora and pointed it out there on the maps just so you can know where we are headed. But one of the powerful one of the many powerful things about Minecraft Education Edition is that we get to go in and travel around virtually and actually feel like we are in these places. So we are going to be starting out with the Nobel Peace Center in Minecraft. They have rebuilt that world, so we're actually going to be walking through it and, and seeing what it looks like in that center. And then we are going to get to travel to her hometown and actually walk in her shoes and, and see what it was like for her. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Maurer and he's going to guide you through logging into Minecraft Education Edition. As he's doing that, if there's anyone who's having issues logging in, please put that over there in the chat and I'll be happy to assist you while he is showing you how to get logged in. All right, geez, you would think it wouldn't be so complicated to unmute myself after doing this a million times, and yet here I am clicking and just keep turning myself off. So we are good. It's so good to see all my global friends here. We're going to be experiencing this, and so I'm going to be sharing my screen here in just a second, and maybe for the sake of time, because I really do want to get you into Minecraft. If there's anybody having issues logging in, please let us know. Uh, because it seems like from the probably before we start recording, most of you were good to go. Um, so I'm going to start from the Minecraft menu. But if there is a glitch or an issue, somebody's having problems, please, please, please let us know so that we can get you up to speed. So let me get my screen shared with you and make sure you can see this beautiful world of Minecraft. So hopefully now you're able to see my Minecraft screen. And if not, just holler at the bald guy and let me know. Um, but what I want to do is make sure we get a chance to everybody be at this page. And so if we're not at this page, um, let us know. And also, if I happen to go too fast, please let me know as well. This is live. And so in person it's really easy to gauge body language and and, and the vibe of the room and, and virtually it's sometimes a little hard so we're very dependent on the proactive of your learning as we go through here so feel free to ask questions in the chat feel free to let us know if we're going fast enough feel free just to make sure this experience is is what you want so on this screen here we are going to start with the new and featured section so let's go ahead and click that 
that second box on the menu there, new and featured. And it's going to bring up a new menu here in my blazing internet speed that I'm having here in the moment. There we go. And this is really exciting. We're going to be focusing on the active citizen activity here within this thing, but there are plenty of new and featured worlds and learning opportunities that are always coming up in this menu. So this is a really exciting one to keep coming back to, especially if you don't have the time to always read up on all the latest updates. And so there's some, the Save the Ocean and Climate Futures Transportation is, is pretty phenomenal as well. But for today, we're right here, the Noble Peace Center, Active Citizen. So let's go ahead and click this option. And you can see uh, the description, all this stuff here that you can read. I know many of you are ready just to dive into the world. If you are an educator, the lesson plan and information right there is for you as well. But we're going to click Create Worlds. Let's go ahead and do that. It might take, depending on your internet, a second or two to load up. Sometimes mine takes a little bit of time. So why this is loading, just to give you a little bit of context before I set you free. We got two things we want to cover today, and we don't just want to talk at you. So the first part of our exploration in this lesson is for you to undergo an adventure with Malala. In this case, you're going to be trying to find four journal pages uh, that has been scattered throughout her, her village. And we're going to give you time to explore, try to find those and just kind of explore the city or the village itself. And then we're going to segue out of that world and we're going to come back to a different part and we're going to have a building challenge and you're going to be able to build a symbol, a representation for something that you're passionate about when it comes to peace for the world. Uh, what's your cause that you think you, you could start to create that ripple in the universe? So keep that in the back of your mind while you're going through this. I don't want to catch you off guard and be like, hey, think of this. Now go build because that can be sometimes a little stressful. So we're going to be doing a building activity. So we just be thinking about that um, so that when we get to that point, you're going to have an opportunity at least to have an idea um, of where to start. So hopefully you guys are all getting logged in. Um, I promise mine will segue over here in just a second. Is anybody having any issues with anything at this point? I tested this like 10 times before and it was fast and I knew as technology would still have it, it would go a little slow when we actually go live. Okay, gives us all a chance to navigate to where you are. Yeah. So maybe in the chat while we're waiting here too, a couple things. Maybe if you want to share, uh, let us know just some of your experience with Minecraft. Is this this brand new for you? Have you are you like a guru and you're like, hey man, step aside because I can do this. Like we're just what's our experience? That'd be kind of nice to know too. I know we might have a little bit of combination of everything, just so we kind of know what we're working with. Um, and hopefully this world here will be up here in just a minute. It's, it's building quite the terrain for you, Mr. Jeez, I know. <laughs> I think I should like click out, but then I'm afraid I'm gonna even back up things even more. It's like the old man teacher that doesn't understand technology and everybody's like, come on, get with the times. Even though I can't do anything right now, but. So Sally, I see your uh, first time, first time Minecraft experience. So welcome. Well, 
Well, we could also be doing while we're brainstorming is adding to our table that we created for Malala and then your strengths. So based on the video, what are some things that you observed, some strengths that she has and skills that she has used and then start thinking about the strengths and skills that you have and that you might be able to apply to helping us have a more peaceful world. And Brandy, I see your comment there. What an incredibly small world. Here I am in Bettendorf and that is where you're from. That's just craziness. I don't even know what other word to use, but craziness. So I'm glad you're here. And uh, my train is slowly building here at the speed of a snail. Do you want to close yours out, Mr. Maurer, and uh, try it again? And I can share my screen and you can guide. I'll be happy to, yeah, you want to do you that while, you're, yeah, while yeah, your we'll train is building. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then we can switch over. So let me, let me X out and I'll reboot up. I'll stop sharing here and yeah, if you want to take over, I can navigate or you can too if it's easier. I will um, let you navigate. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. Bearings back up here. Okay. All right, Mr. Maurer. All right, for some reason, I am not able to see your screen. So how about you begin to navigate? My world's just about loaded. Sure, okay. Well, so I'm gonna back up a little bit and I just wanna share because in the slide deck, before we got started, I showed you an actual picture of this Nobel Peace Center. And so now if we go back and look at it, you can see that we actually are here, which I just think is so powerful in Minecraft Education Edition. If this is your first time to be in Minecraft, you may notice over on the left hand side of my screen, I have the keys to be able to tell me how to move within Minecraft. A lot of times we do this on a device and so it's a little bit different if we're doing it on um, like some type of tablet. So if you're not familiar with how to move around in Minecraft Education Edition, you can look over on the left hand side and know that like W is going to move you forward. S is going to move you back. A is going to move you to the left and right and then space is helpful because that'll help you jump. And then we did recommend that you have a mouse that is like your eyes. So it's your head. It's it's where you can look around and see. So we're actually going to enter this as if we're actually in Oslo, Norway. You notice when we get in here, there are going to be a lot of people that we can talk to. The first person that we are going to interact with is Alfred Nobel himself. And so when we get a little bit closer to him, you'll notice at the bottom right hand side, our mouse tells us that if I right click, I'll be able to talk to him. So I'm gonna right click, see what he has to say here. And he's welcoming us to the Nobel Peace Center. Um, he's telling us he's Alfred Nobel. He invented dynamite, which predates your Minecraft TND. <laughs> His invention re revolution revolutionized industry and he used his wealth to create a prize for people who embody curiosity, creativity and the drive to be useful to others. Also, I'm not sure if you know this about Alfred Nobel, but he invented dynamite, which was actually very helpful with coal mining, but then it became used in ways that he didn't expect it to. So it became used in, in things like war and he didn't want to be known for that. So he wanted to be known for creating peace in the world and not creating destruction. So that is where this has stemmed from. So also wanna point out when you're in here, there is a little immersive reader icon there. So at any time that you interact with any of these characters, you can click on that immersive reader icon and this is going to give you the ability to not only translate what is there so you can translate this into another language but you can also have this read out loud so if I come down here and press the play button it's going to read this out loud for me and then I can also come up to my reading preferences and I could translate this into another language so that's helpful to know. 
So I'm going to get out of here and press OK. And then I'm just going to first we're just going to visit the Nobel Peace Center. So I'm not going to go to this challenge yet. So I'm going to visit. And then he's telling me that there's actually four laureates in this Nobel Peace Prize Center right now. They're actually going to be adding more laureates to this, but there's currently four in there and each one has a story to tell and we're going to be focusing on one of them today. So I'm going to press OK and then I'm going to pass him. I'm going to start looking around and you can start looking around and seeing the different of the building, the different areas. And then as we move and walk, you're going to notice that each of the four laureates actually have a place here. And so here's Malala and we're going to come back to her in just a moment. But I do want to point out that if we did a little more walking, we would come across the other laureates that are in here. And so after today, we suggest that you go through and you actually learn about the other laureates in here too and the other activities that are in here for them. So I just want to do a quick look show you that they are there. Then I want to show you if you come across this button that says do not push <laughs> and do not push. It is so tempting to push it and it's OK if you actually push it. It's just going to kind of scold you that you shouldn't have pushed it. <laughs> so but you can't have buttons there and not expect us to push it, right? So <laughs> we're going to go back around to Malala over here. And you'll notice there she is on the stage. Go around, there's some information. She has a book. I'm wondering if any of you have read her book, but she has her book there on display. You've got some nods that you've read her book. So we want to actually talk to her and interact with her. So we're going to come over to this little button here. And if we right click on it and use it, she's going to walk down and interact with us. Has your terrain loaded? Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay, do you want to share and, and take us into Malala? Yeah, let's do it. World? Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep my video off just for a second. Let's make sure it's smooth. I think that was part of my issue here. Um, so we've got Malala right here, front stage, front and center. If you go ahead and right click on her, this is how we're going to interact, and she's going to let you know a little bit about what's going on uh, of her home in the Swat Valley. And what we're going to be doing is entering this place and starting our adventure with Malala. And so if we go ahead and click this start adventure here, it's going to bring us into her home, and you can start to explore a little bit with your controls. You got those controls are off to the left side if you need them if you already know how to control you can hit the h and, and hide them as well and it's telling us to go talk to malala so we're going to go ahead and do that so we're going to walk up to her again we're going to give her a lovely right click and she's going to let us know a little bit about what's going on so this is where she lived with her father mother and two brothers and what happens as you continue to read this is that when the taliban the military came uh they wanted to share the world, so she had to hide her diary entries around the city. So our task, if we go ahead and click OK, we're going to see here now we've got a zero out of four diary page progress bar right above our hearts and our, our food. Our job now is to go find these four diary pages. So I'm going to allow you, not allow you, you don't need my permission. Uh, we're going to give you some time to try to lock those down and find out where they are. But I will get you started just in how to get going in case you are new to Minecraft and maybe you're still trying to figure out controls and how these things work. So if I go ahead and just walk past Malala, we'll see you later, Malala. Goodbye. We're going to see uh, right away we've got a villager. These are going to be very important people to talk to along the way. They're going to give you insights about the village. They're going to give you insights about uh, the world that was going on in these times. So if I click, right click on her, they're going to give you some information. And at this point, they're going to, she's letting us know that girls' education was outlawed. 
and that they destroyed up to 150 schools and they're going after more. So this kind of gives us a sense of the, the struggle, the, the friction that was going on um, during this time. There are signs and things that kind of help you gauge where you are in case you need to go back and, and retract your steps. The beauty of this world is you can't get too lost in the weeds because they have these lovely constraints that open up over time as you get further into the game. So I can see here that we have another villager. I'm going to go ahead and click on her, and she's letting me know we're not supposed to be out. We're not supposed to be here, but we're going to have to find those diary pages. So clearly we have right here a person from the Taliban. I'll give you a hint. If they see you and you get too close within a proximity, it will reboot you back to a starting point. So at this stage here, if I look at my screen and maybe you're already moving ahead, there is a chest right here in front of me. We need to get to that one first. And that's gonna give you your first diary page. And you're gonna have to then from there, you'll they'll start to get segues of where to go next and where to explore. And so things will start to open up. So I'll give you a hint. Once you grab that, this truck will disappear and you'll be able to continue on. And so it's kind of like a progress as you go through. I'm going to slowly go through the world, but I don't want to show all the answers because the excitement is your own discovery. So let's take, let's go for uh, 15 minutes and we'll do a pulse check along the way, see where we are in the chat. But let's just go and have some fun. And if you're not sure or you get stuck, I will guide through. I'm just going to hold off for a minute or two so you guys can have a head start so I don't ruin any of the awesome, exciting opportunities of learning within this world. If there are questions, throw it in the chat. Otherwise, if you're not already rocking and rolling, and I'm sure many of you are, let's go ahead and begin this adventure and see if we can find all four diary pages. Good luck, my friends. And as Mr. Mauer said, you can post in the chat. You can also come off of mute if you need assistance or have any questions. We're happy to answer as you're working through this. Hopefully you are feeling immersed in what environment Malala lived through and how she must have felt. So take note of those feelings that you are experiencing as you are going through this and trying to stay clear of those that are might be harmful and send you back and how it must have felt to just be in this place and to not be able to get out. So I'm going ahead and I'm getting the ultimate stare down, man. This guy doesn't want to budge. Ah, there he goes. So when you get to the chest, if you haven't used Minecraft before, you'll right click again. And I can see the diary page is in the chest. And so I want to just do a regular mouse click. And I want to bring that down. You'll see now I have a diary in my inventory. So I can hit this X here. And what's really cool is you can read the diary itself. So if I want to, because it's already equipped down in my inventory you can see that purple box or that purple diary right there if i just right click it's going to open up that that diary or that journal entry and then i can read what she was writing at that time and so i can able to explore this so every time you find a diary page i would right click and read uh, just so you can learn a little bit more about what was going on and learn a little bit more about malala A uh, great question on the respawn. It doesn't take you all the way back out to the very start. It kind of resets depending on where you are. And actually your heart and food will not go down. So you'll you'll be fine in that way. Like it's not it's not designed to like create that much frustration. Just enough to make it a little challenging, but in this case the goal is in the learning itself for this particular part. So it's not designed where you have to have a whole lot of like skill acquisition in order to be successful. I hope that answered your question. And if not, go ahead and tell me. I 
and Mr. Maurer, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it if they double click on the space bar, they can run faster? Yes. Or something that they can run faster. Yeah. So if you have to yep. run fast to get by stuff, that might help. Yes. The beauty, a little teacher side note about these worlds, when you are these adventures, I should say, is from the teacher side of things, they can't just go wander off endlessly. And there, there are creative constraints. We can't build in this world. Um, we can't escape outside of the village itself and be off task. It, it keeps the students centered on the activity. So that's a nice feature. Uh, so you don't have, you're not worrying so much about management or as as you are just helping kids feel confident in the work they're doing. Uh, another great question I see there, you will not lose progress. So just like any Minecraft world, if you save and exit, you'll respawn back to wherever you were when you, you hit the save and exit option. So you will not have to go back. Most of these activities don't take several days, but you can go back and explore. And now I'm kind of, st oh man, he got me. What a bummer. I'm going to go fast this time. So hopefully everybody's maybe found two diary pages. Maybe your past. And to continue on with that question over there about losing your progress. So like Mr. Maurer said, it will save your progress as long as you're on the same device. If yes. you were to switch devices and go to a different device, then it wouldn't have saved your progress. It's device specific. So whatever you do on the device that you're on, it's going to save. But if you move to a different device, it won't save. It won't have saved what you've done. You'll be starting over. Correct. So where are you all so far with your diary pages? Can you put a number there over in the chat to let us yeah. know? It took me forever to do this. I was still on one for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, me and you, I was right there with you. <laughs> so Julie, do you have number one already or not yet? Just one, okay. I see, just one for now. Excellent. All right, so let me do this. So if you have number one already, Okay, we got this chest, as you can see my screen. When you come out of here, all right, so let me turn around like if I walked out, you're gonna wanna go to the left, see this green sign, it's bizarre, it'll kind of navigate you. And you can talk to this villager right here. She's gonna let you know some more what's going on. And where you wanna go from here, there's a little side alley, a little tunnel here where you can see three guys walking. You're gonna wanna follow that down and that will get you to your second chest in which that's up there and you can't be seen by these three people. So hopefully that helps for some of you that are on one trying to get to number two. It's right up there. Lots of different strategies to get there. There's more than just one. If you look around, there's some, look at your environment. There's some ways to get there. Hey, look at that winner, winner, chicken dinner with all four. Not messing around today or tonight, <laughs> I should say. So at that point, if you are complete, if you want, you can continue to explore the world here a little bit. We got just a little bit more time because um, some things will be open that weren't open before. So if you want to explore and just kind of see maybe other things that are there while we give some other people a chance. Uh, to get to where you are, to get to your status level. So congratulations. If my camera went and bogged things down, I would get you give you a virtual high five. But when I turn my camera on, everything falls apart. <laughs> Probably trying to hide my 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 face. It's been known to disrupt cameras and photos. So you know. Slow down just... terrain building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Add one more to the list. 
All right, so I'm going to keep moving on here. If you need some help, if you've got number two and you backtrack out to this space here, we're just going to keep heading on down the trail. We got another villager here. He's going to share some things. Oh, that's my diary. Some more information there about the destroying of schools. And we're then actually going to turn away from him. This one here is probably the, the most challenging of the four, just to let you know. Um, so you gotta, there's some different angles you can go about. You can kind of work through the bazaar. You can try to like navigate when they turn away and just go in a straight shot. Um, this guy's a little tough. He doesn't move. He just kind of stares at you. So that's a little tough to do. So if you're stuck here, I would like, I always like to go right here to the right. And I would go to this doorway. Oops. And I could actually even bypass that next guy through this doorway. And now I'm here to this point. And then I kind of just want to peek out here a little bit. There he is. He's walking by. So I know I can bolt. All right. So now I'm here to, oh. That guy just about got me. And this guy here is going to tell you a little bit more information. Ah, I keep it in my diary. So he's giving a hint that she'd like to go upstairs. So that's where we need to go. If you're at this stage, we're going to go here to this ladder. And if you haven't climbed a ladder before in Minecraft, you just get in front of it, kind of just look up a little bit, and just walk forward, and you will climb up the ladder. And then we'll just walk around all these beautiful garments here. And lo and behold, there is the third one. And if you are not at this stage, you haven't got to the third one, you're still working on the first one or the second one, that is perfectly OK. What we would really like you to think about is this immersive experience. You are in this world. You're walking through her shoes. What are you feeling right now? What do you think that she was feeling with all of what is happening in her world? I think that is what I love the most about this is that we can read a book. We can learn about it. We can watch videos, but we are actually in her shoes. This is what it would feel like and how scary it would feel to not be able to leave your buildings and to always be watched. And that the fact that she had to hid these or hide these diary entries. So those are just some things that I hope that you're thinking about as you're going through this. Like this is what it felt like for her. Oh. Yeah, what it absolutely. Somewhat definitely would have been a lot scarier in person, but we hope that you're feeling this immersive experience on the power of Minecraft and being able to walk in their shoes. So if you're if you haven't found all the diary pages, we just do hope that you're just experiencing just walking around, just looking at the environment, feeling that you can always go back and look for those diary pages yeah. at any time because this world is available to you. Yes, yeah, so just real quick. And then I want to get to our next build because I'm seeing the time here. Once you get that third page, you got to come out of that alleyway again. And now you'll see this truck has disappeared. And so we got this guy here that we need to avoid. And if you talk to this villager earlier, we talked to him earlier. He told us uh, some information. Oh, not this guy. Sorry, the next one over here. We walk around that guy in the Taliban. We start to work here. This lady here will tell us that the school kids used to sneak in and out of a hole. So that's giving us a clue of where we need to go next. If you walk around, do we go there? Where do we actually go? And there's these little hints on the floor, these little sandstones. And so if we go through and kind of follow this around, and there's a lot to come back and explore, there's a hole right here. And then from there, oh, geez, he's right there. Whew, I was lucky. Going to explore the school here that's 
been discovered. And I'm going to quickly go up these stairs. I believe there's another guy in here. And if I go to this chest, it's empty. So it's like a trick. And what a lot of people will do, they'll leave, but there's another chest right there. And there is this gentleman. So I'm going to hurry up here. I'm going to right click, grab that fourth one. Now I have all four. And I can see Malala over there. So I have to figure out how to get to her. So there's a little doorway right here. And she's going to tell me to meet her down. I have to jump off that balcony. Plop on down. And she's going to ignore me. Just kidding. There she is. And then you have two options. And this is where you can stay a while, explore, or you can return the hub. So this will take you back to the Nobel Peace Center, which is where we want to go. If you're not all the way done, okay, the way there's two ways to get out of this. One, you could just exit and save and exit and then get back to the main menu of Minecraft. The other way, if you haven't found Malala yet at the end, you go back to where you started. And from there, you can find her again and get to the build arena. So let's try to find that option. All right, and get ourselves back to the Nobel Peace Center. And actually, for the sake of time, because I am, I ran a little late on that one. Let's just um, do this. Let's hit the escape button on your keyboard. And that way, if you haven't used Minecraft before, this is probably a good little tip too. And we're going to hit this save and exit. And it's, what it's going to do is going to save where you are at in the world. And it's going to take you back to the Minecraft menu. So we do that. We hit save and exit because that was a question from earlier. And what's going to happen here is on your menu, you'd be able to go back to this world right wherever you were standing and pick up and continue on. So maybe you didn't finish now, you could finish here at a later date when maybe you have some more time. And you, all your worlds are gonna be here in this play button. So if I hit play, I can click view my worlds. And you're gonna see I have a lot of active citizen worlds, but this is the one that was recently saved. And you can see it shows me where I was in that world. So I could click, it's gonna resurrect me right back into that exact spot. So every time you save an exit, that's going to happen. But for time, we still have a little bit of time to build here, don't we, Noreen, to do a little bit of the build challenge? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go back to new and featured, and we're going to go back to active citizen. This is going to open up a new world again, but normally we would, if we had time, we'd go back and find Malala, and we could go back to the, she would just transport us back. But it's going to create that world again. It'll be separate from what we just did. And this time we're going to go right to the build. We're not going to do an adventure, so to speak. Hopefully mine doesn't take forever here. There we go. And so while that's loading, let me... Oh, good, it's there. Sweet. We're just going to go right back up. And we're, let's just talk to, to Alfred here again. All right, so just like we did before, he's gonna give us an option. Do we wanna visit the museum or build challenge? We wanna go to the build challenge just so you can see some of this application of the learning for kids. So we click build challenge. Here he is on this arena. And if we talk to him, here's our challenge. Build a representation of your cause. Will your cause be restoring the environment, freedom of expression, access to education, whatever your passion might be. But I always like to phrase it as, how will we as an individual be able to make a difference to make the world better? We say that all the time. I think so many times we think like we're gonna save the whole world, but what is it that we're passionate about? Is it education? Is it freedom of expression? I can't answer that for you, but that's what we wanna do. And you're gonna be building a model here in this huge open canvas, this whole space here, 
It's kind of like on the back of the museum. And a couple cool things if you've never built before, you're going to hit the E button. And the E button is going to show you every Minecraft block that you have at your disposal to build. And so you, how you do this, I'm just going to click this prismarine wall and I'm going to drag it down. Mr. And Mark, maybe I'll. Can oh, yeah. Pause, or, or pause for just a moment and make sure that everybody has had a chance to get back to this. So, are you all oh, back yes. in the. Did, were you all, first of all, able to make it back into the main area of the museum to talk to Alfred Nobel to be able to then go to this build challenge? You can give us a thumbs up if you're able to make it and navigate it back, or if you need help getting back to this area. Or if you found all four, Malala will give that choice to come right to the space too. Sorry, I was getting too excited. I get excited when it comes to building. <laughs> you like ready to build. <laughs> man, I was in my zone, man, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Do this. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you haven't made it back to this section yet, and you were still looking for your diary pages, which I totally understand, if you escape, save and exit, and then go back in and create a new active citizen world and then talk to Alfred Nobel again, that's going to be able to allow you to get to this build challenge area. So as Mr. Mauer is going through this, if any of you are still trying to get back to that, just put that over there in the chat and I'll be happy to guide you over there as he is showing how to start building. So we just wanna make sure that you're able to get to this area in the world. Yeah, so you can just real quick, I know we don't have much time to build, was this opportunity you can continue on and we want to see what you create. And so we want you to share that with us, which will leave some time to show how you can do that. You can search for these blocks, you can scroll through. Um, I also know that I might want to, I might want a chalkboard or some sort of label to put some labels around my builds. So if I were to search board, I can get this big kind of chalkboard and so I could go that way and there's some other options we can do. But what I want to show in case you're new to Minecraft, how do I use these blocks? So you see I have in my hand now this, this prismarine fence. And if I do a regular mouse click, it actually breaks the world. So what I want to do is you want to use a right click to build these options out. And you'll see with the right click, wherever you click on a block, it'll put it there. Now, if I wanted to use like the white staircase, I would hit number two on the keyboard because it's the second box in my inventory. And now, oh, oh, let me try this again here. There we go. There's my staircase. And then vice versa, if I wanted to put a board, I would hit number three and I can type in, you know, hello, this is my blah, blah, blah. And then once I do that, it's right there. And anytime you want to exchange for other blocks, you just hit E in your inventory and you can then just replace them. So maybe I don't want that fence anymore. I could go through here and uh, you know drop that in. And now I've got a new block. So the canvas is yours to build and explore, uh, which is pretty nice to have as you get going. So I know we don't have a whole lot of time. Geez, sorry, I got my bulldog howling over here. Uh, get a little bit of time to build, but you're gonna have more time to do this on your own. And so I know that's fa that part's fast and a little bit furious, but I know Noreen, we wanna be able to show them the flip grid and some things. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you can share that. I know they're still working through their worlds, but at least we can make sure they have an opportunity to uh, know how to share their builds. Sure. So the, the build is uh, an extension of today's activity. So we wanted to show you this active citizen world. We wanted to give you the opportunity to walk through the shoes of one of the four laureates. We encourage you to go back to this world and look at the other four laureates. And if you didn't find all the diary pages for Malala, we encourage you to go back and look for those too. But then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again so that we can talk about how we would like for you to share your build that you're working on. And so in that build area, you have 
the opportunity to build something that could use your skills and your strengths to make the world a more peaceful place. So one idea we were just working with some students and one idea from them was to build a bench where it was inviting for anybody to sit. And if somebody sat at that bench, it would encourage others to sit at that bench. And so she designed a bench in the build challenge and she put a sign and it said, welcome to this bench. And then if people saw someone sitting there by themselves, they can go and they could sit at that bench with that person. So it's building relationships and support and helping people not feel alone in the world. So that's just one idea that you could be doing in the build challenge, but we want you to think about your strengths. Think about what you were jotting down in your notes and your ideas, and then practice building that within Minecraft in that build challenge area. And then we would like for you to share these so that we can learn from each other and we can see the different builds and different ideas to create a more peaceful world because that is the purpose. So we are going to be sharing a Flipgrid link with you after this session is over. It'll be with the link for the video to be able to go back and watch this on demand. We'll have the link for the Flipgrid. And in the Flipgrid, if you're not familiar with it, you can do a screen recording of your build. So we have made this to be a minute and a half. So you can just summarize your build and share that with us. But this is what it is going to look like. So if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, when you go to this link that I will share with you, you're going to choose add response. And then within Flipgrid, and my cameras are going to be a little off because I'm presenting in Teams, so it's not going to show my, my camera in there. But when you go into Flipgrid and I come down to options, one of my options is to be able to record screen. And so when I come in here, I'm going to go ahead and choose start screen recording and I want it to be I've got a lot of ones up here. So I'm going to share this one. And then I'm going to pull up my Minecraft world and so now it is actually screen recording. Me and Minecraft and I'm not in the build challenge area, but if I was I'd be sharing with you what I built the purpose behind it my strengths, why I think it's important in here and I would be guiding you through my builds. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to stop recording. And then you'll be able to see that screen recording and you'll be sharing it with all of us so that we can see the great things that you have designed. Because as we've learned from the Nobel Peace Prize and the laureates is that it can anyone can do this. Anyone can help create a more peaceful world and environment for all of us. So we hope that you add to that build challenge and can share your builds with us. And then lastly, let me move this over so we can just recap on what we have done. Let me just skip ahead. We've got a lot of stuff in there. And so the purpose of this active citizen lesson is that we wanted you to know the purpose of the purpose and the value of the Nobel Peace Prize while discovering skills that were used by one of the four laureates that we were able to experience the journey of within Minecraft Education Edition. And then we wanted you to start thinking of a vision, no matter how big or small, that could be put into action, whether it's in your community, it's in your the greater area, it's in the world, but to start creating that visualization within Minecraft Education Edition. So we are so glad that you all were able to join us and a shout out to all of our friends that are joining us at midnight in Malaysia. <laughs> we have friends from all over the United States who are joining us and it has been such a pleasure to work with all of you. We can't wait to see your builds, your visualizations in Minecraft. And again, I'll be sharing that link for Flipgrid. I'll be sharing the link for the recording so that you will have all of that. But thank you again for joining us. Mr. Maurer and I are going to hang out for another 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long needed. If you have any questions or want to talk more about this and how this can be used with students or how you can share this with your colleagues. We'll be happy to answer it. Again, we thank you. We hope you enjoyed this world. Hope you got to feel what it was like to actually walk through the shoes of a laureate. 
it's a lot different than just reading a book or watching a movie about somebody to be able to actually walk in their shoes through a world that was built to replicate those real worlds. So thank you again. We will be hanging out to answer questions. We appreciate all of you joining us and uh, hope that you enjoyed this world. And Mr. Maurer, do you want to add anything before we go? I'm just going to add virtual fist bump to all my new friends. I'm so glad you joined us, regardless of the time of the day or night. Goodness, the dedication, education in general um, is really powerful. And today was a perfect example of that, regardless of your age and, and where you're at and the time and things that you're doing. So um, hats off to you if I had a hat. There it is. And I look forward to seeing your builds. Reach out if you have questions, anything like that. Um, not just myself and Noreen, but the community at large is very, very supportive and helpful to make sure that we have meaningful learning um, through platforms like Minecraft Education. So um, thanks so much for being part of the journey with us here today. And like Noreen said, we'll stick around if you have any thoughts or questions uh, for us. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll know where to find us. One last thing before you go, if anybody is interested in taking a group picture, if you want to turn your camera on, I'm going to grab a, a group picture of oh, us. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Have that. So if you're not comfortable turning on your camera, that is totally okay. But if you are, we'd love to take a group picture of everyone that is here with us today. Noreen, is my hair okay? Oh, Mr. Maurer's fixing his hair. Yep, looks great. Right, I, did. <laughs> I had that patch of split in, so I want to make sure it wasn't showing. <laughs> I'm going to give everybody just another moment to turn on the camera if you want. Again, no pressure, but if you want to turn it on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take it. And I take, a, I take a couple just in case we have eyes that are closed during it. So just to let you know. So here goes our first one. Grab that. Okay, I'm going to take two more just in case. And one more, just so I, I love the thumbs up. That's awesome. <laughs> and got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again for joining us. Please don't hesitate to let us know if you have questions. We hope that you all have a great rest of your day or rest of your evening as you're <laughs> heading to bed in Malaysia. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Thanks, Noreen. It was good to see you guys. Thank yes. you. Good to see you, Charity. Great lesson. That's a great